Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome DARPA aerospace engineer and former astronaut Pam Melroy. We just heard from Craig Clark about the revolution that's happening in low Earth orbit with small sats that are going to change the world by the ability to look at the Earth every day and beam that information to us real time. I'd like to talk to you about some technology that DARPA is developing that will lead to the next revolution beyond that in geosynchronous orbit. So what am I talking about? Space is space, right? Well, low Earth orbit, or LEO, is the lower region of orbits around the Earth, typically 300 to 600 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So the small sats that you heard about from Craig operate in that regime, as well as a few other famous satellites like the International Space Station. There's some real advantages to this altitude. Because you're at a low altitude close to the Earth, you can get extremely high resolution imagery of the Earth with a very modestly sized telescope that can fit on a small sat. There are some challenges, though. As you whiz around the Earth in low Earth orbit, going around once every 90 minutes, you get to see a small piece of the Earth, and then you're moving on. That's why getting good coverage requires constellations. In addition to that, within about 25 years, you're going to deorbit due to frictional drag. Geosynchronous orbit, and this is not to scale, by the way, is much further out. 36,000 kilometers away from the surface of the Earth, or almost 10% of the way to the moon. GEO has an almost magical property. Because the orbital period matches almost exactly the time it takes for the Earth to rotate on its axis in a single day, objects in GEO appear to be hovering directly over a single spot on Earth. Orbital velocities are lower, minimizing the risk of debris generation and collisions. You can imagine that because the field of view is huge from that far away, if you have a large enough aperture, you can see almost a third of the Earth's surface at once. And that's why most of the telecommunications satellites that give millions of customers television every day operate at GEO. Long lifetimes, very stable orbits. In fact, we don't think an object in GEO is going to reenter the Earth's atmosphere anytime soon, maybe up to a million years. We think this sounds like a really interesting place to put infrastructure because it's such a stable place. So what kind of infrastructure am I talking about? Well, think about it. It's a long way away from the Earth, and it's really hard to get at your stuff and to bring it home. What if you could build a satellite up there in GEO? What if you could repair it? What if you could upgrade it with the latest electronics? Sounds great except this is a very hostile environment for humans. The radiation exceeds all the dosages that we can handle. So we think the key technology to enable these capabilities is space robotics. Robotic arms, very much like the one that was used to build the International Space Station, but with greater levels of automation and safety. DARPA is building just such a robotic arm. You can see it over in the expo. It's got interesting characteristics like robot reflexes and compliance control that greatly minimize the risk of debris from inadvertent collisions. We think this is a critical capability to building a transportation hub that allows transportation to and from the Earth's surface, from low Earth orbit to geo, and even beyond Earth orbit. We think that these capabilities, space capabilities, are not just about a single monolithic satellite with a few capabilities, but instead about a vibrant, robust ecosystem that involves transportation, repair, refueling, upgrading, in situ construction. So look at the great seafaring port cities in the world for inspiration and imagine a port of call at 36,000 kilometers. Thank you.